welcome to the penultimate uh, installment of the Russian uh, Internet Meme Short Course Lecture Series. Next week will be the last one. Um, and today I'm going to talk about a series of, um, of memes about, about a phenomenon known as the stone fox, which I think will be familiar to many of you. And we actually saw the stone fox earlier on in our um, in the Zhdoom lecture. Um, but I want to talk about this not first, I'm going to spend some time showing you some of the memes, but I also want to talk about it in terms of, um, of the problem of uh, the relationship between the Russian internet and the outside world and also the material world. And then one of the reasons I decided to do the Stone Fox was that um, it had peculiar political resonance that would, I think, it surprised me, frankly, because I thought it was a pretty harmless, innocent meme, but um, stirred up quite a um, set of controversies um, in 2012, 2013. All right, so let me share my screen. Okay, there we go. Share, great, so fantastic. All right, so you're seeing the you're seeing the Kyle meme, all right, right? Sasha nod if it looks okay. Great, thank you. <laughs> all right, so there's a phenomenon of local adaptation and appropriation in, um, that we've seen in the Russian memes. Our big example, of course, is the Carl meme from um, initially from the Walking Dead TV series became a huge meme online in the English-speaking world and spread everywhere, including in the Russian world. We've also seen a kind of complex multilateral trade. Um, in memes across the internet, um, such as uh, the ones involving the squatting slob, right, which um, is in the West than, than, it, than it was in Russia, or is in Russia. Um, and sometimes we can find the exploitation of an aspect of a foreign found object that wasn't visible in its home environment, which we saw um, a bit with Zhdun. Um, but the best example, I think, or the most interesting example um, of a found object um, from outside becoming an internet meme um, is the stone fox, which is usually translated as stone fox. Sometimes it's, it's been a whole bunch of things, but stone fox is kind of a standard thing. Um, so like the Walking Dead Carl meme, the stone fox wasn't originally Russian. Um, it wasn't even originally a meme or a digital phenomenon at all. What happened was in 2012, there was a young Welsh artist and taxidermist named Adele Morse, uh, here she is, um, who got a package containing a body of a fox that had been caught in a bear trap. So Adele Morse um, is a vegetarian um, and she is opposed to cruelty to animals. And so, but she loves taxidermy. So she would only do taxidermy on um, animals that died of natural causes or that, that died not to be um, to objects of taxidermy. Um, so, which meant that her choice of subjects always had an element of randomness, right? You don't know what dead animal you're going to come across at any particular day. I mean, we all know that. Um, so she was working on the fox, um, but she didn't have any fox eyes lying around in her studio. So eventually she was eyes from a human doll, um, which okay. made... Um, if, if you are meaning to change the slide, it hasn't changed yet. I haven't changed it. Okay. Yes. Um, so she used, um, she used uh, uh, eyes from a human doll um, and was kind of unsatisfied with it. So she put it up for sale on eBay. Um, and eventually it was bought by Mike Borman, a London DJ who decided to display, display it during his gigs. But by that point, the fox had embarked on this whole thing about which Ainsley Morris had no idea um, using uh, variations of this image um, of the, the stoned fox. Um, the image she posted to eBay found its way onto the Russian internet and became one of the most popular subjects for photoshopping onto other images to, to create memes. So I think I've mentioned before that in, in, in Russian, this photoshopping phenomenon is referred to as photojaba, which is a um, distortion of the English word photoshop, but ends up meaning um, photo. There's no images so far. Really? Yeah. Huh. Okay, hold on. Thank you. I'm trying to get to resume share. My mouse is not giving me, oh, come on. Crap. Hold on one second here. Okay. I'm going to reshare, sorry about that. 
sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't sure either um, <laughs> when you had said that you didn't mean to shift the slide. So it sounds like. Yeah, because it had, but now, yeah. yeah. All right, let's do this again. There we go. There we go. All right, so are you seeing the foxes? Yes. Okay, and now are you seeing Obama? No. It's, okay. Hold on. All right. The photo with Adele wasn't visible either. Okay. There we it's go. It's visible now. Yes. Okay, I'm not going to go to slideshow. Is the fox, is it now the fox? Yes. Okay, great. Fantastic. I'm just going to keep it this way. I don't okay. know what. All right. Huh. Okay. So, um, so this is a phenomenon of the photojaba, which literally means photo toad, um, but is one of the um, more popular ways of making a meme, which is simply inserting an image into um, another image. Um, and soon Morse um, started receiving emails with these memes, um, having no idea what they're about, where they're coming from. And a lot of them were pictures of her fox with all of these various famous people, like here, here's the fox with Obama, here's the fox with Putin, um, here we have them on a... Um, sitting on a bench, Zhirinovsky, um, and also the fox be superimposed in a whole range of classic paintings and photos. And again, the classic painting thing seems to be a particularly um, Russian meme phenomenon. Um, so here we have the fox at Yalta. You might not see him. He's in Stalin's lap. Um, here we have the fox of Marilyn Monroe being analyzed by Freud. Same with Jesus bench. And inevitably, um, the, the woman with the pears is always the woman with the pears. Uh, this one, Pietro Vodkin. And finally, of course, um, with Lenin and the children. Um, the fox would even um, be quite uh, popularly inserted into the logo for Firefox. Um, it's very easy. To, you can customize Firefox to have the um, stone fox logo if you want to. <clears throat> um, for a fox that never moved from its sitting position, the stone fox really got around. Um, even a series of them in, um, involving space travel. Um, I, I guess the fox is hurtling um, on a meteor to the doom of Earth. Um, and then, of course, the fox ended up interacting with um, a whole variety of pre-existing memes. Keanu, House, everybody. Zhudun, of course. The Sochi toilets, I think that we remember. Game of Thrones, and then this one, which is basically a compilation of just every meme the, the author could think of all together, including Putin flying on the bird and Stone Fox um, taking pride of place. Um, then there are also a whole series of demotivators or um, uh, memes with captions in which just the image of the fox and the words put around it are, are um, kind of like the opposite of those um, those cheesy posters about um, have a nice day, hang in there. So here, um, it says, uh, girls, on, on March 9th, after you have to, um, when you have to uh, wash the dishes after the um, women's holiday, um, I think you, for, you forgot about me in life, on the passport, by an art gallery. Every morning when the alarm goes off, I sit on the edge of my bed and I imitate the uh, famous sad, um, sad taxidermy fox on the, on the chair. The uh, stone fox strolls around Petersburg. Girls on their first date, and then um, a year later, I've become popular. Congratulations, son. And of course, on the um, bronze horse, and, um, Peter, I'm already on my way, which has to do with an event that I'll be talking about in a minute when, when the stone fox and her creator were actually supposed to be coming to Petersburg. Um, a cartoon of uh, someone picking up this, the fox corpse and saying, um, uh, fucking fox, I'm gonna make a, um, a dummy out of you, and then uh, fuck her, yes. Um, uh, can't fucking live like this. Um, the feeling you have when you, um, uh, when you got ready to go out, but you've stayed at home. Um, when you read in the morning, the uh, messages that you sent out last night when you were drunk. Bella, I'm a werewolf, I don't believe you. Stone fox. 
the feeling you have um, when it's already from you haven't gone to bed yet. The famous Privyet um, Nivyet, um, the hello there from a whole other, from one of the early, an early uh, set of Russian memes, Lise, what? You're stoned. And then he's ashamed. Kill me. Um, that won't change anything, bro. And it's morning. And of course, you end up with merchandise like this T-shirt worn um, by Anna Viduta, the press secretary for Navalny, and the inevitable Alyonka chocolate, which everything it always has to end up on Alyonka chocolate. So um, Russia has seen many, many photoshop, many Photoshop memes before this one, and certainly after. But the Stone Fox uh, was quickly uh, mired in controversy, which is surprising considering how really innocuous this meme seems to me. I mean, those, the ones we saw with the, with the words were really about kind of feeling sad or feeling depressed or feeling um, regret, um, but certainly nothing political or, or possibly immoral about it. But one, at least one of the reasons that people got um, angry over the Stone Fox was an interview that Morse gave in which she insists she was misquoted. It was published on March 13th on Wales Online, which is usually not a top a news source for readers in the Russian Federation, I'm guessing. Um, Morse talked about the possible reasons for the fox's popularity, and she said, quote, I asked what it was about the fox that they liked, and he told me that the fox looks a bit sad and drunk, and that's how Russians feel. His plastic eyes give him a glazed look, and they identify with it. They think it symbolizes the nation. So whatever you might think of this particular interpretation, it wasn't Morse's. She's quoting back some Russian um, that she talked to saying this is what it's about. But in the Russian press, this point of view was attributed directly to Morse, this um, young woman from Wales um, slandering Russia. Morse quickly issued a denial. Um, in a 2000 interview on creepytaxidermy.com, you know, that one you've got bookmarked, on creepytaxidermy.com, she said, I got misquoted as saying it was because I thought all Russians were sad and drunk. This is obviously, A, not something I would ever say, and B, caused a mass massive reaction from Russians, rightly so. And elsewhere, she pointed out that it wouldn't have made sense for her to say this, and she didn't know enough about Russia to come up with that sort of generalization. Um, but the damage was done. Um, and when there was supposed to be an exhibit of the stone fox um, in Moscow and St. Petersburg, Moore started getting verbally attacked um, online um, by nationalists and conservatives of all stripes. Um, and of course, uh, Duma deputy Vitaly Milonov, author of the gay propaganda law, um, uh, called the exhibit propaganda for animal abuse. Um, a charge that Morse, the, the vegetarian um, animal rights supporter, denied. Um, though she did express some pride that um, she's being targeted by such an odious figure as Milonov. Uh, Milonov insisted that the animals were only the beginning. Quote, the next step is they'll start stuffing humans and displaying them as art objects. Well, that step already happened, but he didn't know about it. Um, the leader of the St. Petersburg Communists of Russia affiliate um, accused Morse of, quote, mocking our country and, peer and um, jeering at our national interests by displaying the fox next to Lenin and to other Russian leaders. Um, and a party spokeswoman called Morse uh, an anti-Soviet Russophobe. The anti-Soviet part is really interesting because that should seem to be rather irrelevant at this point, but it, um, it's almost like she went on autopilot. Um, so you would think that fulminating against a stuffed fox and absurdist memes is a losing strategy, and the accusers do end up um, looking laughable and humorless. That is, um, all of this got press, a, a fair amount of press, but it wasn't particularly necessarily sympathetic press to the people attacking the memes. Um, a lot of it tried to be neutral, um, but it did not become some massive crusade on the part of the media to um, attack the stone, the stone fox. Someone opened up a Russian language Twitter account for the stone fox, um, where the stone fox says, can someone tell me where Vitalik Milonov lives? We need to talk. And what's so anti-Russian about me? I don't get it. Are you Russian Orthodox activists stoned? Uh, Alexei Navalny got embroiled in this because he always does whenever it involves the internet and um, the online world. In 2014, he wrote a tweet mocking the um, municipal deputy Alexei Lisavienka. Um, in addition to calling Lisavienka a uh, drug addict, which then led to a um, a trial for uh, defamation. Um, he likened the deputy signature, sincerely yours, Lise, short for Lisavienka, to the stone fox, um, and which then went back to the whole drug addict thing. Um, and the back and forth and the transfer of the trial was really hilarious because um, Navalny, of course, out talks this guy at every possible moment. The Stone Fox and Mike Borman, the DJ who bought him on eBay, were interviewed on the independent television channel TV Rain um, by Pavel Lapkov. 
Um, Borman said that if the Fox were given Russian citizenship, he would try to legalize drugs so as to stay stoned. Um, Labkov compared the Fox to uh, French actor Gérard Depardieu and to the American actor Steven Seagal, both of whom, of course, got, um, were famous for their support of Putin, for, um, for getting Russian citizenship, uh, and for the uh, lavish um, rewards that were showered on them. Um, Labkov said that, um, that the Fox would never get citizenship or a five-room apartment in Grozny or Saratsk, which is what um, either um, Depardieu or Seagal got. I don't remember which one. So intellectuals offered their own theories about the Fox's popularity. Um, uh, Vladislav uh, uh, Supluhin said the Fox is a meme you can touch. Another one said it's a freak show. An Another one said it's an example of a Pavlovian response or a chance to laugh at Putin somehow. Um, others said it's a challenge to traditional hierarchies. Another said a, sim a senseless image people insist on finding meaningful. Um, uh, this last person compared the fox to Malevich's uh, black square, but not in terms of the fox being an example of great avant-garde art or anything, but the fox being something totally stupid that people are making a big deal out of. Um, the most revealing response, I think, was that of the writer Gyuri Pankratov, who in, in the newspaper Vzgliad insisted that stupid internet memes are not worthy of exhibits. And the fact that Morse was invited is a sign that, quote, something is rotten in society where such fun, that's in English, such have a nice time, also in English, um, that's it, that was the end of the sentence, it doesn't really make sense when you translate it back. Um, comparing the stone, he compared the stone fox to the uh, performance of Pussy Riot in the Cathedral of uh, Christ the Savior. Uh, he admits that stone fox is a minor phenomenon, but it's the sort of art that demands repression. He says, formally, it's not breaking any laws besides morality, but in fact, it, pr it provokes such a wave of disgust that one really wants to pass a law to make sure that if it happens now, it will never happen again, um, which then reinforces the, uh, the reference to Pussy Riot. Um, it really, it is in the article, it really is an example of why we need a repressive culture policy. So, and the Pussy Riot thing is also important because it helps us explain why this particular thing um, touched a nerve at that particular time. Um, because the uproar of, uproar of Stone Fox really looks disproportionate now. But, it was, but this all happens in late 2012, which as we all remember is a turning point in contemporary Russian cultural politics. There's the wave of protests that preceded Russia, uh, Putin's election to his third term. The legislature busily pa passing restrictive law after restrictive law, eventually banning international adoption, starting policing the internet, forbidding swearing, and clamping down again on um, so-called homosexual propaganda. So inviting the creator of the stone fox to the country's capitals was like waving a red flag in front of a bull. Um, representatives of the media and the state were primed to find sinister intent behind even the most vaguely subversive actions. Um, now, again, this is, it's not that the country has gotten more relaxed or liberal since 2012, but one thing that has changed is that um, if internet memes were already a part of, um, of people's ordinary life in 2012, to some extent, they certainly are by now. Um, and more and more of the culture's population, I think, has grown comfortable with, um, with internet culture, at least to some extent. Uh, it's not that, um, me that Photoshop memes were unfamiliar. Um, it, the uh, Stone Fox was preceded by the quite famous uh, witness from um, Friazin, I mean, this is the, the guy in the black jacket. It's a picture from a, a wedding in Friazin, and he looked so strange and so sinister in that picture that he ends up being photoshopped in practically everything. And here we have him at a royal, royal wedding. Um, and no one, uh, that goes back to 2006. And as far as I can tell, no one was particularly upset about the more uh, ramifications of the um, Svidetis Friazin. Um, the mere fact of, sh of sharing or enjoying memes in 2006, when Friazna starts, or even 2012, marked a user as at least somewhat internet savvy, and probably, just statistically, I think more likely to have a bit of a higher comfort with irony. Um, and an ident identifiable former, for, uh, foreign meme such as Stone Fox could still be seen as sinister by people who are spending less of their lives online and who are already prone to see threats around every corner. Um, so in terms of anxiety about memes, I think 2012 and 2015 was something of an outlier, in part because we're still in this process of greater and greater internetification of the country, and in part because that was such an intensely charged moment of cultural paranoia. Um, so, but ultimately, memes are easier to domesticate than foxes, dead or alive. Um, and just almost a decade later, um, it is harder, I think, to imagine um, quite this much outrage over something like the stone fox. And that's all I have to say about the Stone Fox for today. I will stop the share.
Thank you for being patient with all the technical difficulties. Thank you, Elliot. I am going to turn on chat with everyone. Uh, and we already have a few comments. Uh, this co controversy reminds me of the Borat debate in Kazakhstan. Very smart of you. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's all. That uh, reminds me of the Borat debate in Kazakhstan. That's from Olya. Um, have any questions? Oh, Amaryllis, you can go ahead if you want to unmute yourself. Yeah, so one, really, uh, the, the lack of humor <laughs> that seems to be coming back and back. The, the, the complete deafness to irony seems to be this repeating theme for a lot of these things. I, I was just sitting here going, truth is stranger than fiction. Um, yeah. I mean, so you have this artificial concept, right? And all of these memes are artificial, uh, particularly when you look at something like the Shdun, right? Um, why do you think they have become so human? Um, and in the back of my mind, there's Bakstein's statement that a free society is, uh, is the one where you can laugh, mm -hmm. right? So there's always that sort of the back of my looking at all of these is just like, wow, how is this reflecting some of that Bakhtinian sense that lack of humor is lack of freedom, mm -hmm. but sort of why, why this like lack of humor, it, it just befuddles the mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that the, the, um, the people the particular people that I, I cited here um, who are so outraged over the stone fox um, are not, are already not famous. Like Milonov, I don't think is, is famous for um, being a fun guy. Um, and um, Orthodox activists on the whole, I don't think have, a, have um, the rep reputation for being freewheeling jokesters. Um, however, so part of it is at least at this point with the stone fox um, and what's happening, the turn that's the conservative turn that's happening in Russian political culture, what we have is really a very familiar setup where um, the forces of repression are humorless and the forces of freedom are, are funny and, and, um, and fun loving. And um, I mean, it's basically, it's all footloose, right? Um, it's always, it's all just like, you know, we dance, we laugh and you guys have no sense of humor. Um, and that is, familiar and that's something I think I find that reassuring now um, because we know what to do with it um, this is not yet like the stage of the um, of like the alt-right trolls who know how to use humor um, for the force of like right-wing repression um, so um, what we have is this moment that actually looks a lot like um, a lot like a kind of late Soviet response to um, to satire and humor. And um, it's not something, I don't think it's something that's been consistent about the Putin era or consistent about, um, about the government, but I think that particular moment um, was a hard one to, uh, to navigate um, with a sense of humor if you're on the, if you're on the side of, of the state. Um, and in fact, um, Come to think of it, this is sort of a perennial thing, right? Um, so on the blog and a talk somewhere, and possibly in this book, I talk about that um, the uh, um, satisfaction videos where the the um, cadets in Ulyanovsk uh, perform that um, perform their version of that very racy video where they're dressed like basically like village people um, doing their stripper dances and. Um, a lot of people immediate. A lot of people went online and, and support and did their own versions of it. And then there's a lot of the the people attacking that video were not, strangely enough, attacking it in terms of homophobia because they actually could not see these guys as gay because they and they probably weren't, but couldn't even imagine them as gay because they're you know in a military school. Um, but it was really about them being um, irreverent. And the, these the conservative forces could not stand in the irreverence. But the response online um, was to continue the fun and to defend them as boys just having fun. 
Um, and again and again, I think, especially with internet culture, when you when you can when you're fighting um, when you're fighting against fun, uh, you're on a kind of you're um, it's a losing battle. Um, and the fight against fun is not, I think, a top-down state fight. Um, it is a fight that appears, that appears from local initiative, from people who support the state and supports uh, conservative or right-wing or traditionalist um, ethics, and then don't necessarily do their cause much of a, do their cause a favor. I know that was rambling, sorry. Um, David Goldfarb, if you want to unmute yourself, you can go ahead. One thing uh, I was curious about as you were going through the classical uh, art memes was uh, that you blew by Leonardo's uh, Lady with the Ermine, which is, uh, I'll, be, I'll be the person who like is at the conference about elephants and asked about you know, elephants and the Polish question. Um, <laughs> the, so uh, this is the most famous painting in a, in a Polish collection. Uh, and Poles are very proud of it because it, you know, reveals the con connection of Poland to Europe and the Renaissance, or at least they used to be. I mean, or there's half of the Poles are very proud of it for that reason. You know, the others may be, who knows. Uh, but uh, was there any context around that that marks it as Polish, or was it just that it's like an obvious thing because, you know, she's holding this thing that's, you know, referred to variously as the ermine or the weasel, uh, and here, and here we have, we have the stone fox. I don't think there's any any context besides that because uh, one, I mean, not all of the um, Photoshop memes that were made um, were about people holding things, but anything with someone holding things, something was just really an obvious fair game for putting the fox in, especially if it's, it's animal-like. So, um, and most, most of the times when we see art memes, when I see art memes, um, it's, it's not like in a museum when you have like a little um, thing explaining it to the side, it's just, it's just the image. And um, I mean, one argument for why, you know, one argument uh, for the, per the uh, prevalence of these art themes on the Russian internet would be that, wow, Russians are just, you know, better educated about art and find these things familiar in a way that people in other countries might not. Um, but unless there's like some uh, very well-known historical context, usually a Russian one, like, you know, Ivan the Terrible and his son, um, it's usually just an image, I think. Thanks, Elliot. Um, William Nickel, you have your hand raised if you'd like to unmute yourself. Hi, Elliot. Really interesting. Um, I live in a, a house full of fox lovers, so I'm trying to decide whether they would want to watch this or not. <laughs> they would, actually. Um, my my eight-year-old daughter just told us that she is dating a fox, <laughs> um, oh. a Minecraft fox. <laughs> um, just, yeah, anyway. Um, but I, just a couple of thoughts came to mind. Um, you were talking about the reaction being uh, reminding you of kind of post-Soviet, late Soviet um, reactionary uh, kind of vibe. But also I think the irony strikes me as really sort of late Soviet and looks like kind of graffiti and uh, just some of the, you know, cartooning. Um, and, you know, just you were, you were mentioning that um, Adele Morse was blamed for citing, quoting this person who told her why, you know, the, the meme was so popular. But, you know, the, the meme, I assume, uh, you know, all those images you were showing, those were all generated by Russians, right? Um, I mean, that was probably just obvious, but, um, so there's this weird thing where it's almost this Chujia Nisvai kind of thing where there, you know, there's this sort of infiltration of this alien kind of, irony perspective on our culture um, and so it's convenient to sort of pin that on a foreign uh, agent but the, the real problem seems to be the internal the the memification of it right I mean she didn't she never intended for this whole phenomenon to happen so there's this weird kind of infectious element that seems to be at play so often when you know, and the anxieties about the internet and the anxieties about the sort of decline of values and the, the even just the sort of 
faking of reality, the photoshopping, that you can kind of put things together that don't belong together and you can kind of destroy values in that way. There just seem to be all these anxieties kind of mixed together. And then just one last um, little thing is, you know, just thinking about the, the fox in, in folklore and, you know, uh, Am I frozen? Are you frozen? Oh, yeah. sorry. Oh. Yeah, I see. I'll just, no, I'll just okay. end there. I'll just end okay. there. Thanks. Well, first, I'd like to wish your daughter and her her fox friend <laughs> every every happiness. Um, so yeah, this the, 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 I I don't I'm uncomfortable. Well, I'm not uncomfortable emphasizing the attacks on irony here because those attacks were made, but. I don't want to make this too representative about the whole um, foreign uh, inclusion of foreign elements in um, Russian memes because so much of the Russian memosphere is made up of the same visual material that we know in the um, in the internet here. I mean, Keanu, in the, the Keanu Reeves images are all over the place. Um, the uh, all of the images um, that we that we're familiar with often involving um, movie stars, but not not necessarily that. And to some extent, those aren't foreign anymore, right? Because um, everybody's consuming the same kind of world superculture. So it's not that every um, and or any um, foreign image uh, that would be photoshopped in here would be attacked like this. And then also, I mean, I think if it weren't for that interview with Morris, I'm not sure if anything would have happened. There's you know yeah, there's irony here, but barely, right? I mean, there's really this is. This is really, ironically, when we talk about Fox, a tame stuff um, as, as memes go, certainly tame politically. Um, it's, I find it extremely innocuous. Um, and so I still um, am surprised, even after reading all of this and doing this, this research, to find it being at all controversial. You know, just several years later, when we have Zhdun, if you remember the Zhdun lecture, Zhdun is foreign, Zhdun comes from the Netherlands, Zhdun is embraced by everybody. Um, people are talking, they're writing about Zhdun on Sputnik. They're talking about Zhdun on Erte. Um, Zhdun, um, Zhdun basically is, you know, the, we are the world of um, not just Russia, but the entire former Slavic part of the Soviet Union, all of which had their own name for Zhdun. Um, there was no real argument over Zhdun um, several years later. Uh, granted, Zhdun is, Zhdun is like a big Teletubby. It's hard to, well, they argued over Teletubbies, good thing, but never mind. But, um, there's really part of its passage of time, but part of it I think is just the, the sort of Greek randomness of this um, thing happening with that interview with Morris, because um, there's plenty of um, foreign stuff brought in that doesn't um, raise eyebrows at all. Okay, we have a few comments in the chat uh, from Dennis Brown. I've been watching and searching for Stone Fox and Kalabuk. Shrek was okay. Shrek was okay. That is taking a children's character out of its home. Is children's lit more off limits as a background? Kalabuk might have escaped from a Stone Fox. Oh, that's interesting. I, I've not noticed Kalabuk. I've certainly noticed um, Kriusha from Spoko English and Malishri. I've noticed Kriusha in various contexts. In fact, somewhere I saw. I didn't include it, but there's definitely a Hrusha and the Stone Fox um, thing around. So they're not exactly off limits. Um, and uh, and uh, Chiburashka certainly. Um, so I, I don't think they're off limits. I just can't explain necessarily why some of them are more memed than others. Um, because all of the ones that we've just named are such are such a huge part of um, post-Soviet common knowledge that one would expect them to be very available for this sort of thing. Okay, uh, and then a question from Olya Prokopienko. Uh, I wonder if there was any reaction to the Fox from Piskov, who was famous for his witticisms. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear from whom? From Piskov. Oh, not that I know of. Um, you would think, right, but no. I don't think it rose that high. And from Amaryllis, um, I like that Bro showed up. And it's like the Buffy episode where uh, vampires go and steal the impressionist posters from the student union vendor because it's uh, ubiquitous, well known high culture images that have also become so cliche. Yeah, that's true. That Buffy episode is sort of pre memes, but they're going around counting like how many of how many Odeon things, how many um, of these particular cliche things, and they, and they get it. 
and those vampires are also stuck in the images from um, whenever it was that they uh, were were turned into vampires. So this is there's a paper in there about about Buffy and memes. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, David and Amaryllis, do you have your hands raised because you want to ask another question? Okay, you just have them left. So I can lower them for you. Um, any other questions from anyone? So next week for the final lecture, I believe I'll be calling it um, Comrade Lenin and the Gang. It will be memes about Soviet leaders um, with possibly Yeltsin thrown in there too. Um, so that is what we're going out on. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you, everybody. Excellent. Thank you, Elliot. Thank you. Thank you. As always, really good stuff. Oh, thank you. Yeah.